Okay, so, well, if you are intrigued and about the title, the, th the topic is, uh, is very easy, it's very simple. Why does people do uh, atomistic simulations, okay? It's because the, micro the macroscopic behavior of things or materials depends on their microscopic structure. So what we try to do here is uh, why do applications scale or how do they scale or understanding that a little bit better. And uh, well, it's again the same thing. It's their macroscopic uh, efficiency depends on the microscopic behavior. And we try to understand and analyze that behavior. So I will be trying to talk a little bit about the POP Center of Excellence, which uh, is essentially aiming at that, at giving services. Uh, can you see my mouse? Yeah. It's, it's about giving services to customers from uh, all over Europe, both academic and industrial. And uh, those services try to understand the, the behavior of application and, and how to refactor it. And it's not targeted to a given application domain, but it's kind of uh, transversal across many application areas and platforms. And if I can insist, I mean, it's just what we do is try to give a, an external advice. Uh, we will not take responsibility of any of of, of developing uh, any code. We will not. We will. We uh, don't claim that we are experts on uh, specific application domains. What we can provide is an external view, of which very often is very useful for people to have something which takes them out of their daily daily focus on on their code. So gives an external view, which. Uh, is 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 we think is very appreciated by people and uh, of course the codes are your codes you will develop them and maintain them in the future but maybe the comments and the suggestions and the indications of how to refactor those codes uh, are helpful to to get good quality in the usage in in, in the characteristics of the code so this is what we try to do, this external assessment, this external view of how the code is behaving and the uh, promotion of best practices in terms of suggesting how to maximize the, the, the performance of the code. Keeping something very, very important is minimizing the, the refactoring, making it as portable as possible, minimizing the cost of developing those those optimizations. We target mostly MPI and OpenMP codes, typically also acceleration, accelerated codes, but uh, mostly I would say hybrid MPI and OpenMP. And in terms of customers, it can be code developers. You would consider them to be the main important customers. So just to give them this external additional view of, of what, is, what is happening on their, on their code. Uh, but uh, if you are also a user not developing a given code, but sometimes you may have doubts about, oh, I mean, is this behaving as well as my provider or the code developer uh, claims, or maybe is my data set has something strange or the way I'm using it. So we can really analyze the, the usage of the codes even if you are not developer. And essentially this gives what we, our analysis can give you is evidences on how to interact with your provider. I mean, you can say, oh, the problem is is algorithmic or the problem is for of the implementation is or is a problem with the platform that you are using. So this kind of information, rather than blindly going to contact your, your provider is, is something which is useful. It would be nice for infrastructure operators in terms of assessing the performance of the applications run on their infrastructures. The truth is we have less infrastructure operators and less vendors. We have all sometimes also done assessments for vendors. They have their benchmarking and customer support type of activities and we have done some of these studies. In many cases, what we have is just, we're trying to push a, a methodology, a way of doing things, and, but we are interested in people learning to do it and doing themselves. Of course, that's, that's no problem for us. Actually, it's part of the, part of the, of the objective. 
So the, 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 we offer this service, okay? And essentially what has to happen is if you are interested, if you say maybe an external view on the behavior of my application would be interesting, uh, you have to apply on this page here. If you have further questions, you can address them to, the, to this uh, mail. What happens when you apply is that uh, we have some selection process or assignment process where we assign the different studies to some of the members of the consortium of the partners. If you have some preferences on, on your study being done by some body some or some specific tool, uh, you can or you can apply if you can specify it or if you want a specific focus or orientation in the study. We typically, once this is assigned, what we typically, I would typically recommend is that we, or that you install the tools in your production machine, the, the customers, the users. So the idea of doing an analysis of, on a code on the system or on data sets that are not relevant to you or on, is we try to avoid that as much as possible. So, my, I mean, you may be user of praise and then it will be on a machine, on a praise machine, that's that's fine. But if not, uh, if you are a company or your the idea is try to try to install the tools in your plat in your system so that the the analysis are as realistic as possible to the points where you are actually experiencing every day. And then we enter try to enter an interactive process of gathering the data, analyzing and reporting so till we close the the study. Essentially two types of studies. One is these uh, assessments uh, where we try to identify issues, where we try to identify real detailed causes of that. Okay, and going beyond what a typical profiler that probably you have already done uh, would, would give you. So <clears throat> estimates of potential quantitative improvements and, and possible recommendations. In some cases, those recommendations are we believe that uh, this technique should be uh, the way for you to follow. And if, I mean, in many cases, people is already with this external view, maybe they are open their eyes to directions or things they had not thought, but they have experience enough to, to do it themselves and or they have other constraints. So they might not be interested in a proof of concept uh, assessment uh, study, but but if you are, what we try to do is to drive, to go with you through the implementation of one of these uh, approaches, one of these proposed techniques in one of your codes. It's always your code. It will always be your code. It's not a matter of taking any, any ownership or of, of saying I'm going to do the parallel version. It's show on the real code how to do it and then so that you can really apply it to the menu maybe we show it in one place and you can apply it in two or three or four places. So these are the, the kind of two studies, but one typically starts by uh, by asking for an assessment, okay? And the assessments, at some point in time, we did them by a lot of uh, kind of uh, written reports. We are now trying, we, ha we can do, depends also a little bit on the willingness or the interest of the customer, but we are doing sometimes written report with text or sometimes it's just in the form of presentation of slides that we discuss interactively with the customer until we set to a, to a report that uh, is insightful for, for the customer and it is uh, within describes a little bit generic characteristics or of, of application behavior. And this is more or less the type of structure it has in terms of uh, a very first step about detecting the application structure, which is very important in general. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's curious how sometimes even as owners, we really have some, some misunderstandings about the actual behavior of the, of the code. So we identify the regions of interest and to, it, and to those regions we apply scalability, scalability studies. Uh, I'll come to this a little bit later and especially the efficiency model. So I will enter in a little bit later into more technical things. Then we discuss the detailed, uh, some of the detailed factors that may cause uh, the, the problems and, and we identify the reason why, which may be on the algorithm, but maybe on the machine, maybe on the way of the program is run. So we try to identify these things and provide some summary and recommendations. 
uh, if you want more information, more detail about the web page, probably the first one that I think consider is on the web page. There's one section for uh, uh, the questionnaire to request a service, a service. If you have a code that you would like to be analyzed, uh, there is this section where you can request a service. If you are curious about the other services that have been done, other studies, other success stories, you have links there also to these uh, success stories or to specific performance reports. In reality, what we ask is people at the end of the assessment, if they if they agree, they we have the, the report in terms of text or in terms of slides, we ask them if they agree for us to publish it, to make it public or not. Of course, if they don't, we don't, but, but in many cases we have made them public. And there is kind of a corpus of, uh, of uh, methodology and practices and, and experiences that probably other people got can can get from from there. There is also some learning materials about the methodology and the models and the tools and some webinars that links to webinars that we periodically do. So there, there's information that you can follow from the main web page. One of the things which is uh, in this version of the project of the Center of Excellence is we are we are uh, we are developing some sort of repository where we will be kind of uniformizing and integrating what we consider are these best practices and this co-design information, this co-design understood as, as as providing kernels, skeletons, which we link to them as them being as representative of real applications that we have analyzed. They don't certainly need to be the code of the applications, it's just the abstract fundamental characteristics. And this can be information that can be used for co-design by by hardware people, by architects, but also for for runtime uh, developers, and also maybe for for applications we understand co-design in a holistic way, which is just finding out where the best approach, where the best solution to fix uh, an issue, and sometimes maybe by putting hardware support support or hardware dimension, but sometimes it's only by by doing adaptations on runtimes. And for example, for us, for VSC, this is important because we are developing a lot of runtime and compiler support. So this is a place where we can play. But, but I don't know, there's insight here that can be used also for, for other projects like uh, architecture projects. I'm going to go to very, very fast uh, some numbers, yes, on, on the... So, and essentially, up to here is, is what you would be kind of the, the, the basic of the presentation, okay? Uh, what I give here is just some numbers about uh, examples of codes, just to mention that it goes across multiple multiple areas, and we actually are uh, doing and supporting many other centers of excellence where they, they are the real co-owners, but we can, we give some some external perception or view of of how we see the behavior of their applications. Uh, a mixture of programming models, but as I said, MPA and OpenMP or hybrid is kind of the mixtures. Uh, the the f more frequent type of model, there are things about Accelerator, there are things like uh, other specific libraries or frameworks, okay? I don't want to go very much into details, just a matter to say that it's kind of transversal, orthogonal to kind of everything that is being used in HPC and Python is, of course, now something that there are um, not few codes that uh, relied on use it, so we try to do this analysis. Although the major, uh, again across areas, the major focus would be here on MPI and OpenMP. Uh, and again, all the the areas is, is uh, the largest part of it is academic, yes, but but there are centers which I mean could, could be also research. But there, there is kind of 20, 25, which goes to companies and SMEs. Okay, so this is what we, what we try to follow. Probably with the current focus to go towards very, very large, uh, towards six scale. Probably is SMEs is more difficult for them, and and it's more a little bit of more focus on research and academia. But but uh, we have been doing that. We think it's uh, transversal, it's agnostic of of a scale is agnostic of domain, is just about the fundamentals of parallelism and how to improve the efficiency of the codes. 
And this is what I would like to mention a little bit about the, the methodology that we are developing, which, and, and, and I will be showing that on, on, on BSC tools, but I mean, we have partners like uh, Julik, for example, and they have Scalaska and they have other tools. And the idea is we try to, to apply the, 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 the same methodology and, and try to derive the, the same type of metrics. These are discussions that we have is, we have been developing and evolving and it will probably evolve trying to adapt to maximize the information that we provide to customers with with not being without the minimal knowledge that we have on the on their on their application domains okay so the first step which i think is extremely important is about the structure is a, about identifying regions of time and space in the behavior of the code so about time and iterative structures or not of their codes and about uh, space distribution space mean distribution in the across course is are all cores behaving the same are they behaving different so this kind of of analysis in fact we try to do it based on on tracing tools like in our case or we try to do it based on on scalaska for example the thing is, we we try to do it without any access to the source code. Of course, I mean, we don't have the time to become, and this is more something for the for the other COEs maybe. But we don't. We have to do that just based on traces. But even though you can really detect the structure, detect what, detect what is your region of analysis, your your iterative structure in many cases, and apply to it the the modeling and the analysis techniques that that we have. So once you have identified the structure, the idea is to apply, uh, to have a, a performance model uh, uh, that describes the behavior of that application. Otherwise tools tend to capture a huge amount of data and you can focus on profiles, which is, is okay, but is, is, is not sometimes not really very informative in the sense that uh, saying, oh, my routine, my code spends a lot of time in this MPA routine. I should go and blame the MPA vendor. Well, maybe yes or maybe not. Okay. MPI is a perfect gas. It fills whatever space you give it. And maybe the problem is in your code somewhere else. So the idea is do we have models that help us describe in an abstract fundamental aspects of what performance in parallel programs is? And, and we have this model which has these six factors that we show here at the bottom of, of the three leaves of this tree. The light blue ones have to do with parallel efficiency. So load balance is a fundamental effect factor in, in, perform, in, in parallel programming, in parallel execution. Uh, and then transfer itself, the, the fact that the data does not traverse the system at the speed of light. Or, or even instantaneously, and and serialization, which is a metric which kind of says how far the behavior is one where uh, one process waits for process A waits from B, and later process B waits for A, and A from B, and B from A, in in a circular way. So these are three metrics, three numbers between zero and one, that tell you how good or how bad each of these very very fundamental characteristics of parallel big executioner. Multiplying those things, you get the parallel efficiency, which you can multiply with the computational efficiency, whose components have to do about the instruction scaling. So is my parallel code doing some code replication or not? Uh, is the IPC changing when core counts increase? Am I getting better IPC because things fit into the cache or am I getting worse IPC? for some other reasons, maybe memory bandwidth contention. So uh, the, the, these two numbers are finally complemented with the frequency efficiency. Today, this idea that we have that we know the, what's the frequency at which processors execute, that's, that's gone, that's gone forever. The processors execute at the frequency they want or their governors uh, decide or and there, is, there can be a very important variation in frequencies between processors when you scale. So these are just three numbers which say how well, if they are close to one, they say you are scaling well. If you are 
below one, then you say that you are scrolling in a bad way. But the numbers kind of tell you in a very astral, very simple way, what the fundamentals of, of your performance issues are. This is just a description of, of the semantics of what I already presented, just in case you have the slides and you can look at it, them in more detail. And this was kind of a demonstration of what, uh, how we compute these, uh, these numbers. But essentially what you have is you can have a real run on the top, which has some computation parts and some in yellow parts where some processes are waiting from others. And what if you were able to pack everything in the Gantt diagram as we have here in the bottom, if no dependencies. From here, you would really find out what are fundamental load imbalances of the algorithm, global, a global metric of load imbalance. So this is how you compute the, the, load, the load balance or, or not, is by the average uh, duration of uh, the average amount of computation every process has divided by the maximum. This is, we think, a, a, a right way to compute load balance rather than through standard deviations or things like that. This is really a, a way of computing it that is really related to the metric of real what performance you can achieve. And then we have an intermediate uh, transformation of the original actual execution, which is what would have happened in an ideal machine with zero latency, infinite bandwidth. I don't know how much would you pay for that. Uh, I don't know. If you want to pay millions, well, and we try to say sometimes infinite bandwidth and zero latency do not give you a perfect performance, okay? because there are dependencies in the machine, which is what we try to characterize as this serialization. Beyond dependencies, beyond the load balance, the original load balance issues, okay? So essentially, yes, this is the way of separating transfer and serialization as two components of what we consider the, co the communication efficiency. So we have a load balance, a communication efficiency, which is split into these two. Essentially, this gives you a kind of deep understanding of what's happening rather than on this specific source line or the other. Of course, we then go to saying, okay, you see, if we do a deep down analysis and we say this imbalance or this transfer only is in relevant in this part of your code and not relevant in that other part. So this is what we try to do. Essentially, we have a time-based scaling, which is based on the duration of the, you take a few iterations of the focus of analysis for different set of core counts. Uh, you campaign the typical scalability plots, but these things are very, very coarse grained. They don't give you really the semantic information that you can get with the model factors that we have, which actually give you this, uh, this uh, fundamental factor uh, efficiencies. And in this case, we have the, we have the, the, the numbers between zero and one and kind of tell you, for example, for this code, the total global efficiency was not that impressive. It's only 60%, so starts being not that good. Running with this score count is probably not that good. And it tells you what is the, the reason for that. And on, sense, on one side, the parallel efficiency is only 0.77. This is actually the combination, the product of load balance, serialization, and transfer. And in this case, happens to be the transfer is the smaller factor, but still there is some load imbalance. Uh, in terms of computational efficiency, again, it's also not perfect. Although frequency did not change with increasing core count, uh, instructions uh, scalar, there was a little bit of code replication and there was a little bit of loss of IPC when increasing core counts. So these are very overall factors that kind of steer your uh, successive phases of the analysis and you can have many different behaviors on very different applications and the bottleneck may be for all of them in, in different, different parts, different phases. But I think what is important is that it gives a, a common language across many areas. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about climate or you're talking about materials or you're talking about, essentially this is a fundamental thing of parallel programming. And if you have problems with load balancing, maybe what we are proposing in the terms of best practices for load balancing is valid for anybody. But you have to go to the details, okay? So the, the, these fundamental factors are very abstract way. These are the look at the, this kind of the macroscopic 
uh, properties of these materials and then you have to dig down into the microscopic things that cause those microscopic behaviors. And there can be many, many things because we like it or not, machines are really, really complex systems. And uh, well, that's where we have the detailed type of analysis in our techniques. We have things, we apply things like uh, simulations of what ifs. So this is what, this is the actual behavior, a timeline of the actual behavior of a code where the MPI calls are represented by the different colors. And what we do is what if the machine had infinite bandwidth on zero latency? Or am I limited by, by latency or by bandwidth? So you could do experiments doing simulations of changing different, the, the latencies and bandwidth of this hypothetical machine and seeing which of those are uh, your real bottlenecks. You can uh, dig down into its IPC and where is the IPC or is the imbalance caused by, by uh, differences in IPC? Is the imbalance caused by noise, operating system noise? Is this imbalance caused by real computational imbalance? Is it, uh, is it uh, static along time or is it has a very dynamic nature? So going to the deep details of the numbers that quantitatively quantify the global area, we can dig down and, and, and look at the, the specific details. Still, we can come up with recommendations that, that uh, can be taken by the, by the code owner to improve or the operator of the infrastructure to run to better run the, the system. I don't know, these are other type of studies that we do, for example, about what is the evolution when you increase score count of the IPC of relevant regions of code. Okay, and we see cases where the IPC gets really bad or cases where it's kind of really stable. So these, all these things are information that we provide about the, the behavior of uh, code for an individual application of the different parts. We can come out with different routines or different regions of code between MPI calls, for example. And we can provide detailed information about, for example, this thing here. What is in a region of code, in this case, is a region of 400 milliseconds, uh, which is between two MPI calls. What is the, evol the evolution of the, of in, in black is the evolution of the MIPS. And you see that there are faces with good MIPS and good MIPS and faces with not so good MIPS. What is the reason for what is the reason for that? Uh, so this is what we try to we try to be able to to provide information to the users. We also provide information about the memory access patterns. We can also do these kind of things if you are interested. So just to finalize, uh, essentially. So this is uh, the consortium. The idea is that there are different developers or tools and programming model stuff and different support companies. Uh, so, and we try to come up with this methodology and try to provide this service to help people better understand their codes. If you are interested, please look at the webpage and, and if you are interested, you can apply to a service and we can see whether what we uh, our analysis provide you additional information, which we think happens in many, many cases. Of course, it may happen that there is no really new available information, but uh, till now we, we have another process we can have quality control and where we periodically interview our customers about uh, whether they happy or not. And the results are relatively very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for the presentation of the POP uh, Center of Excellence and for the detailed information. If there are any questions in the chat, if not, I will just, because you, you raise a, a very interesting question about uh, when you ask if you want to pay one million. I mean, who, who is going to be able to pay one million for such uh, optimization? But, but the question I want to raise is, sorry, it's not, it's not technical, just who is really, I mean, who are you working with in a, within a company, within an organization, which is a department that really understands the benefits of code optimization? Is it the CEO? Is it the president? Is it the, the, the who, 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 who is the person, the, the job, the department that you are talking to? Okay, two, two things. The first thing is about paying a million. I was not asking a paying a million for this service for the assessment. 
but it's true that, and, and it's not a million, it's true that sometimes people pay not a million, but many millions for, for things like the network, for example. And my, there's a huge competition saying, oh, my network has a latency of uh, this many microseconds or nanoseconds and yours has 20% uh, more. Very often the important thing is not in some of these aspects is is very often is is more a matter of better understanding and better knowing how to deal with those uh, limitations of the machines the the infinite bandwidth zero latency machine cannot be provided by anybody but sometimes people think they they want it and and i my comment was only i think it's it's important to get uh, this kind of uh, assessments and studies so who do we talk to? Our interfaces, we talk. We do talk to technical people who are the code owners, the code developers. That's our basic uh, interface. Okay, we don't uh, we don't talk to the CEOs or not not generally. We try to we try to get the contact to the CEOs, trying to in this kind of studies that we do about what's the importance of the thing, what's the potential gain in economic terms. And we try to gather that information with questionnaires that we do after the service can be, has been provided. But for the actual work, it's mostly with the technical people who are the ones close to the to the actual code and the actual development. Okay, thank you so much, Jesus, for your presentation.